All right. Uh, so what I did, I split forces or force problems up into vertical and horizontal. What does vertical mean? Up and down. Up and down. Up and down. So we're looking at stuff where it's up and down. I'm not going to give you problems where there's like three or four or five forces that you have to get the net force for. I'm just doing two forces that are in opposite directions like 90% of the time. So when we do that, we know that net force is equal to MA. We're going to write it a little differently now. What we're going to do is say, well, the net force is going to be the big force B minus the small force FS equals MA. This is our base equation that we're going to use. So what I ended up doing in the last class, because I kind of confused them to start, I thought of a better way to do this, is this. This is our base equation. We can solve it for four different things. I can solve for FB, I could solve for FS, or I could solve for M or A. Okay? So we did that. On this separate sheet of paper, you guys might want to take out some paper so you got a little cheat sheet. These are probably the four equations you're going to want to put on your note card when we get to that point. I took FB minus FS equals MA, and I solved it for each of the other variables. If I want to get FB by itself, I add FS to the other side. So FB is equal to MA plus FS, meaning the big force must be equal to the acceleration plus the small force. If I solve for small force, what I do here is I add F big to the other, or subtract it to the other side, and then I had to multiply by a negative to get it to look like this. This gives us small force is equal to negative MA plus FB. If I want to solve for mass, all I have to do is divide by acceleration. If I want to solve for acceleration, I just divide by mass. So these are the four that I'm going to keep referencing that we're going to use. This works on vertical problems and horizontal problems. It all works the same. The one other equation that shows up all the time is Fg is equal to mg. And remember that Fg is weight. We're going to need this specifically when we're doing vertical problems. So these are the five things that you need to have. These are the only equations you need for the test. Okay. I will give us a note card like normal. You can write other stuff about it. If you want to write, hey, first law is law of inertia, and second, third law is action, reaction, pairs. This is about all you need for second law. Is this so, going to be a harder test? I don't think it's a harder test. I, it's like a lot of little things on it. So we got to know what the laws are, or like what we did in laws three or the paper we graded today. It's questions like that. I think I pulled some straight from those things. So it's like, hey, which one is this? Or, hey, what has the most inertia? And you pick the thing with the biggest mass. Um, aside from that, the math problems we're going over today and tomorrow are pretty simple, I think. Um, so I'm going to take you through that. Anybody need more time to copy? Wait, so we yeah. have, we're doing three labs in this week? Still or no? Not sure on the labs. No, no. Not sure. Oh. I want to do some. I'm just figuring out the days. When are we doing the lab thing? For the... Fully not sure. Not sure. Like not sure. Like I know. That. I said that, and I'll I'll talk to y'all in a bit. Oh, oh. I'll talk to y'all in a bit. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. So <laughs> we'll we'll discuss it a bit. Let, let's focus on the learning. Okay. So number one, we got hot air balloon problem. Circle hot air balloon, circle fireman, circle elevator. These are all on the test. Okay, I always put these three scenarios on the test. Hot air balloon, fireman, elevator. I might put like two or three on it, but last year I had all three. Okay. Number one is draw a free body diagram, or part A is. We've got a hot air balloon with a mass of 550 kilograms. That's like 1,200 pounds. Hot air balloons are actually really, really heavy. I didn't know that until I Googled it. They're really heavy. Now, there's a buoyant force of 7,150 newtons that's pulling it up in the air. So we're going to draw a free body diagram. We're just going to do this off on the left-hand side. We know gravity pulls straight down. It's called a buoyant force, but I'm just going to call it FA for applied force because I'm not going to get nitpicky on this. What's bigger, FG or FA? FA. It's going up into the air. It's accelerating. So this should be bigger. Cool. That's part one. Or part A. 
Part B, what is the weight of balloon? What's weight equal to? Uh, mass. mass times gravity. Our mass is 550 times 10 means we just add a zero. I'm just going to make a little note. That was Fg, which is equal to m times g. So we did this times 10. Easy peasy. What is the net force acting on the balloon? In order to get net force, you've got two options. Okay, we can either do F big minus F small, or we can do M times A, one or the other. It just depends what we have in a problem. So it's really like net force is this side of the equation and this side of the, the equation. They both mean the same thing. Do I have F big? Do I have the bigger force? Yes. Do I have the smaller force? So I can do that one. Do I have mass? Do I have acceleration? So I can't do that one. Okay, that's how we're thinking about it. So we have to do this. Our big force is 150 minus our bottom force is Fg, which is our weight, which we just found, 5,500. What's that get? 1650. So 1650 newtons, that's the answer to C. I guess I could write that over here, 1650 newtons. And then to get acceleration of the balloon. Well, to get acceleration, I'm going to choose the equation that's solve for acceleration, which for us is number four. A equals FB minus FS over M. And now we're just plugging in what's what. We know that our big force you can plug in the numbers, or we can do an inter a middle step and say, well, that's FA is my big force minus FG is my small force over M. Or you can just plug in big number minus small number equals MA. Both of those are going to get you the same thing. So FA again is 7,150 minus 5,500 over 550. I'm always higher than this. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, they seem so fake. I'm so serious. Anyway, I don't even know how to respond to that. Uh, 550. Uh, we get 3 meters per second squared. Alright, questions there? Seem pretty easy? Number two. Fireman with a mass of 88 kilograms slides down a pole at 1.1 meters per second squared. Gravity pulls him down. What opposes a fireman sliding down a pole? Friction. Friction. He's in contact with the pole. It's opposing it because depending on how tight he's holding on to it. So is friction going to be bigger or smaller? More massive. Smaller because which way is he going? Down. So FFK goes this way. Free body diagram, done. To get weight, 88 times 10. So 880 newtons. Force force, Net force on the fireman. Do we have the big force? Do we have FG? Uh, no. We just got it. It's 880. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Do we have FFK? No. So we can't do this one. Do we have M? Yes. Do we have A? Yes. So that's the one we're going to use. We're going to use MA here. So 88 times 1.1. 96.8 newtons. How much friction is between the fireman and the pole? So is the friction big, smart, big force or small force? Small force. Small force. So we're going to use the equation that's solved for small force. Fs equals negative ma plus fp. Pause. Go, yep. go back to the little bit here. Negative ma plus fp. All row fg is like a g. Ah. Yeah, fs. Good. You're good. So what's our small force? Friction. So we should have FFK 
equals negative MA plus what's our big force this time? What's bigger, FFK or FG? FG, yeah, overthinking it. We're just looking at that and going, okay, that's a small one, that's a big one, which is opposite of what it was the problem before. So gravity's not always small, gravity's not always big, it depends on is it accelerating up or down. That's all that changes in our problem. So from here, we just plug in. Negative 88 times 1.1 plus FG was 880. What's the small force? 783.2. Oh, Good. Yeah. Does that seem difficult? So difficult. Okay, I think it's easier using these equations than having to do the algebra every time because that's how I confuse first period and I just cut that out. So, there we go. That's how are we going to do it? Uh, number three, an elevator has a person in it. The person has a mass of 76 kilograms. If the elevator accelerates up at 1.25 meters per second squared, what is the apparent weight of the person inside? Apparent weight is normal force. Apparent weight is not your actual weight, it's how heavy you feel. Now most of the time, you feel how heavy you actually are. That's a weird statement to make. Right now you are not accelerating. So when you're sitting in your desk, your normal force is equal to FG. They're equal to one another. You feel as heavy as you are. So when are times that you don't feel heavy, where you feel lighter or you feel heavier? I assume everybody's had this experience. Uh, driving on 10, or 10 and you get off at 146 at Walmart. That whoosh feeling. Do you feel heavier or lighter? Lighter. Why? Well, because you're accelerating down, right? So if you're accelerating down, did gravity get bigger on you? No. So your normal gets smaller. Your apparent weight gets smaller. You feel lighter. Uh, anybody, anybody been on like the Tower of Terror? Is that what it is? The elevator where it like drops out? You, yeah. Or there's drop zone. There's all those different rides where it drops really fast and you feel almost weightless, right? Because there's nothing holding you up. You're going in the opposite direction. And then you're going down real fast, and then it brings you to a stop, and you feel heavy then, right? Have you ever been on the Six Flags? I haven't been to the Six Flags in Texas yet. I need to go. Yeah, I haven't been to any amusement parks in Texas yet, so I need to go. Cedar Point in Ohio was really good. Cedar Point is the best thing in my country. 